Do you wake up feeling groggy, tired, and unproductive? Do you have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? Are you relying on caffeine to keep you going throughout the day? If this sounds familiar, then you may be working against your body's natural cycles. And this can make all the difference. If you're interested in not just surviving, but thriving in today's complex, crazy world, then please subscribe and like uh, these videos and click the alarm bell so you know that they're coming because that's exactly what I focus on with all my videos. My name is Ravi Tangri, and I've discovered that the secret to complexity is not doing massive things. In a complex system, there are tiny little pressure points where you put a little bit of pressure on and everything changes. And that's exactly what I focus on with my videos. So if this is of interest to you, please subscribe, like, and please share this so that we can pass this on to all those who need this information moving forward. So Today, we're looking at sleep quality in terms of working with your natural cycles. So if you're having challenges sleeping, if you're waking up at night, what may be happening is that you're um, working against what your body naturally wants to do. There are certain cycles that you have in your body. And if you're fighting that, you're actually going to lose sleep quality. And sleep quality is, is the number one builder of resilience today. So today, on this first video of Better Sleep Week, we're going to talk about those cycles. There's a lot of things that influence those cycles. We'll hit on those in the other videos this week. But first, let's get clear on what's happening. There's Three cycles we're going to talk about today, your circadian rhythm, your ultradian rhythm, and biphasic sleep. And this is something that if you can work with, you will have a much better quality of sleep and you will ramp up your resilience. So what is the circadian rhythm, first of all? Well, your body goes through a 24-hour cycle. It's from evolution. It works with the daylight. It works with all of these things where when you are in light, your body's more wakeful. When it's dark, it wants to rest and recuperate. And there's also changes that happen in your body to enable this. Now, if we are to map these rhythms, if we start off here at midnight okay the, the desire to sleep is going to be fairly high and then as it gets lighter it's going to dip and if we have noon here it'll go for a bit there's actually often a, a bit of a increased desire to sleep early afternoon hence the siestas and so on and the popular in warmer climes and then as you get to evening and midnight again, the desire to sleep increases. What happens as we go through the day, as it gets lighter, uh, your body changes what it's doing, starts producing a chemical called serotonin, which wakes us up, which invigorates us. As it gets darker and we move there, serotonin production decreases and your production of uh, melatonin, which helps you sleep increases. Now, the thing is, this is challenged by, for example, use of computer screens. If you're around computer screens all the time, guess what? That light is going to make your body think it's still daylight and you will increase the serotonin production, not produce melatonin. That's why it's really unhealthy to be on screens right up until uh, bedtime, whether those screens are uh, TV, computer, phone, tablet, whatever it is. So that blue light really 
pushes you towards that the uh towards the wakefulness and it disrupts your sleep cycle another thing is in the morning when it wakes up you wake up do you open the windows and let the light in or do you just sort of hide it under the covers you're you're not letting the light in which produces the serotonin which gets you into more wakeful state another thing here is this little bump after lunch uh, that's, you know, one of the things I've said that helps build resilience is a nap, even a 20 minute nap. And I'll mention in a minute why it should be 20 minutes and not longer, but that's a good time for that. Work with your cycles, recuperate, find a time where you can take that break and do that. And then you'll come back much, much fresher. So when we are working with these cycles, you're going to be able to have a much more restful sleep. Now, the, these cycles vary from person to person. If you're a night person, that it may move a bit forward so that that you'll be awake a little later, maybe till nine or 10 before you start getting tired. And if you are a morning person, it might be a bit earlier, nine o'clock, maybe eight o'clock even, where it's time to start getting ready for it. So this is the main rhythm, and most people know about this, but there are other things that you need to take into account. In addition to this rhythm that goes through the day, you also have a shorter rhythm that goes all throughout the day called the ultradian rhythm. And this varies by person, but it's 90 to 120 minutes. And what this is uh, about is it's it's a bit of wakefulness to sleepy, wakefulness to sleepy that goes all throughout the day. So if we were to come back to this cycle, what it means is that throughout the day, there's this what's Altradian rhythm that's going through your, your circadian rhythm. So you will have more periods of wakefulness. You will have periods where you're more tired during the day. And you can tune in and figure out what that is for you. Now, where this is relevant is uh, it's when it's time to sleep. So you may be, it may be coming time where, you know, you it's dark, you're away from screens, the serotonin starts to decrease, melatonin starts to increase, you start getting tired, but ultradian rhythm may suddenly kick in and make you more wakeful. And then you can't get to sleep. And so what I'd suggest here in order to deal with this is to switch to, um, Rather than just staying away from screens, you actually, before you sleep, you have what's called a cool down period, which is can be an hour, an hour and a half where you can chat with someone, you can read a book, you can journal, you can meditate, do something that allows you to get ready for sleep. And when you feel that ultradian rhythm dipping and get drowsy, that's when you go to bed. Okay, so. This is uh, something that you can uh, work with and start to tune into, but it's only will work if you give yourself that time before sleep, that cool down period that lets you adapt to that rhythm. Okay, so the third thing that I want to touch on is what's called biphasic sleep. And this is something that was very common. People talked about uh, all the time. Uh, if you look at literature 100 or more years old, where people had two sleeps, they would wake uh, a lot of times in the middle of the night, might be three, four o'clock, uh, and be awake for an hour or 90 minutes and then go back to sleep. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, I know a lot of people that do that, that wake up at 3.34 in the morning and just can't get back to sleep. You may be in a wakeful part of your ultradian rhythm. So this is a time, again, where you use it like the cool down period. And you go, you don't force yourself to try to get to sleep. You actually get up, use the bathroom, 
And you can sit down and read or journal or meditate or do something else until you feel that rhythm start to dip and you're drowsy again, and then you go back to sleep. So instead of fighting the rhythm, work with it. Uh, do not pick up your phone. Do not use screens because that will bring you to wakefulness. But something else that will allow you to rest. And if you can work with these three rhythms, your circadian rhythm, your ultradian rhythm, and biphasic sleep, I, I find it's quite typical now for me to um, have that wakeful period at night and I can I can sit I can read I can meditate and it allows me to uh to move forward so the um the thing is to work with these figure out where your rhythm is and then work with it align yourself now there's a lot of factors which affect these that we'll cover in videos coming up this week but these are the main things now one of the um key barriers to resilience and to sleep quality i find is a non-stop head chatter and we're going to address that in the last two videos that are uh in this better sleep week but uh, there's also a, a chance now for you to get, I've, I've created a program and I've made it free because, uh, through the pandemic and everything that's been happening since there's a lot of stresses people are happening, having that are just not being resolved and each builds on the other. And one of the biggest things that builds is that self-critical head chatter, the, the self-talk, the monkey mind that can beat uh, us up. And so what we uh, have produced now is for you is a video that's uh, going to uh, help you shut that off. Imagine if you could just shut off that head chatter. And it's free to you. As I say, I've made it free because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. All you have to do is go to uh, silentselftalk.com, sign up, and you get the full course for free, which will show you how to shut that off, no problem, anytime you want. Remember, if you want to see more of these videos that show you how to thrive in this crazy complex world that we're in, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you will be notified when the videos are up, and please like and share so that we can pass this on to everybody who can use this information.